Hey guys, so I just got done finally watching the Netflix film The Irishman. Um, probably one of the most requested reviews I've had in a while. Uh, I I know I'm like really late in the game to review this. Uh, it's what came out in November. It's like January. Being in January, I'm reviewing this now. Um, this is a movie that, like, I, it was on my top priority for a long time. I've, just, I've been just trying to find the time to go watch, sit down and watch it. Uh, you know, especially with the movie and its length and everything else like that. It wasn't because I wasn't wanting to watch it. It was just, I, like, trying to find a time, like, that I could fit it in. So, Irishman. Uh, man, I gotta try and do a review for this and in like less than a half hour this, this is gonna be interesting so okay the irishman um i have said many times before as far as you know in my reviews of like uh a lot of different films and and me discussing who are my film, favorite filmmakers out there i've said many times martin scorsese is the greatest living director alive today there's no one who could touch him He's, he's, he's God, as far as, like, cinema goes, almost. The modern-day God of cinema, in my opinion. He's, he's, one of, he's the best. And I remember hearing about, I remember hearing about this movie, The Irishman, all the way back in, like, 2011. Like, I, I, I'm not kidding. Like, there was, this movie's been talked about for almost nearly a decade, if not a decade. Uh, they've been wanting to work on this movie for about a decade. It's taken a long time. Multiple different issues, like, particularly, I think it was Mark Scorsese wanted to finish other projects first before he did that. Uh, but this was a movie that he always wanted to do. And all, all I remember 2011 hearing about this movie was, I was just sold on this fucking fact. It was a gangster movie directed by Martin Scorsese and starring Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci coming out of retirement. And it was being called The Irishman. And I said, literally, when I just heard that sentence, I said, where the fuck do you sign me up? When can I get tickets? Seriously, when can I get tickets? I know they haven't even thought of, done pre-production of this movie. I don't care. It's the greatest assortment of actors I've ever heard of in my entire life. And you mix it in with the greatest living director. And this is like a combination like made in heaven. Like this is like, like this was a combination that could make any movie buff orgasm like goddamn man so i like i was sold and like then th this movie was announced like it was finally being made and then to my surprise they're like it's coming on netflix i'm like that's a fucking crime like yeah like i couldn't believe it like they got martin scorsese one of the biggest proponents for old school filmmaking to make his movie for Netflix. That's crazy. It's like he he is like one he is even though he's an old school vision old school filmmaker, he realizes that stuff like Netflix aren't a future of cinema. And he's not like just living in the past. He's a he knows what he's t doing. So yeah, I was like I was sold on this fucking movie. Previews look great. Everything about this movie look great. I've heard nothing but amazing praise for this movie, uh, which I expected. It's being called, like, the best film of the year, uh, 2019. So, like, hype was through the roof for this movie, and I, I'm i not even going to sugarcoat this fucking anything about this movie. I fucking love this movie. This movie, in my opinion, is about as close to a fucking cinematic masterpiece as it can get. I know that's kind of hyperbole. This is one of the best fucking movies I've seen in a long goddamn time. I fucking love this movie. Everything about it is about as perfect as, as it can get. From the acting, to the directing, to the... To, there's just... I 
I was literally 15 minutes into this movie, a three and a half hour movie. I had a smile on my face. I was like, I love this movie. I'm 15 minutes in. I'm like, not much is going on. Not a whole shitload is going on. But I love this movie. <laughs> it's like, it is fucking great. Um, like, what do you say? It's like, man, this is like hard movie to review. Like, because I, I, I could just sit here and just blow about this movie. Uh, the performances from the main three cat, uh, three members of the cast, are Oscar worthy. That's not, that's the fucking understatement if I ever heard one. Um, Robert De Niro, who's the lead in this movie, who's the main focus of this movie, has one the it has a great character story arc for this film as you're watching this guy who starts off as a uh, truck driver for a meat uh, packing company who is a part of a union and ends up becoming friends and working for out Joe Pesci and uh, going up in the ranks in his group and then also end up working for Jimmy Hoffa and like he it's like showing him throughout the years and like all the stuff he, he uh, is involved in and what he his relationships with different people and the mobs the the mob uh, and different people like like I said Jimmy Hoffa and his like how pretty much everything he does affects him in his personal life and how everything by the end of this movie it's like him basically in a retirement home uh, from the beginning it's him in a retirement home telling his life story and basically showing a lot of the regrets that he has throughout his whole life because by the end of this movie he's a man full of a lot of regrets and like his story arc especially towards his acting towards the last half of this movie the heartbreak and the heartache that he goes for in this movie like the stuff that he has to do especially towards like especially when it comes to Jimmy Hoffa uh, because he has a close bond with Jimmy Hoffa they have like this bromance going on and it's amazing like their relationship together and it just because it's Al Pacino and Robert De Niro two guys that just have amazing perfect chemistry together they work so well off one another that you can believe that they're like best friends and they are real best friends in real life and like when it because you know what's going to happen because if you know anything about history and Jimmy Hoffa, uh, you know this is not going to end well, and so it's heartbreaking to see towards like the later half of the movie, seeing what Robert De Niro has to do and the conflict, conflicting feelings he can tell he's having through his just from his facial expressions. Uh, because he doesn't say much a lot of times towards the end. Like, he doesn't have to. You can see the pain that's in his face. His acting is so fucking good in this movie, man. And, I like, if this, the best actor category wasn't so stacked, he probably would win it. I don't know. Like, it's, I, I, it's kind of a toss. I, I, I would think, I would hope he would be one of the favorites, honestly. Uh, I still haven't seen Adam Driver and Marriage uh, Story, and I haven't seen Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler. But, like, man, his, his, his performance is great. It's fucking Robert De Niro. And Al Pacino, man, like, the other performances I thought really knocked it out of the park and was probably the biggest she scene stealer of this movie was Al Pacino. This is, like, Al Pacino at his best. This is the Al Pacino that I've been wanting to see for fucking years. Al Pacino is one of my favorite actors alive, and I know he's a great actor, but he's kind of become like a caricature of himself over the last 20 years. But this is him at his fucking best. The best parts of this movie is when it's dealing with Jimmy Hoffa. It's like the middle half of this movie is the best part of this movie. You're like, there's a whole hour and 40 minutes, hour and a half 
that deals with just Jimmy Hoffa and his relationship with the mob and his relationship with Robert De Niro. And that is the best part of this movie. I'm not saying the rest of it's bad or anything. It is the best part of this movie because it's the most compelling. And that's due to because Al Pacino is fucking awesome. He is, honestly, I swear to God, he should get Best Supporting Actor. Some people say Joe Pesci, and I'll talk about Joe Pesci in a second. I agree, he... I think some people have said that, and I said, I agree, he's great in the movie, and I, don't get me wrong, I think a lot of people are kind of like, just because he came out of retirement, I'm like, by fuck, Pacino just nail it, man. Like, his... He carries this charisma that only Pacino can and then he's playing Jimmy Hoffa and he makes him so fucking likable even though he's doing these really shady things but he's also playing a paranoid Jimmy Hoffa only the way that fucking Pacino can and his crazy paranoid ways like you know like only the fucking Pacino can play uh, I love Pacino. God damn, I love Pacino in this movie. He's awesome. Like, this is Pacino at, like, his best, man. Like, this is, like... I was, I, like, I was watching this movie. He's like, all... Everybody involved, the, the Scorsese, De Niro, Pacino, and uh, Pesci can all go into retirement now. And they would have... This would be the best send-off of their fucking careers. But... Yeah, you know, I don't think they are planning to do that. I don't know. I think Pesci might uh, go back into retirement. I don't know. But speaking of Pesci, he is fucking great in this movie. I'm not saying he isn't. He is fucking great. He he is Joe fucking Pesci. It's awesome to see him back. Like he has. I was like looking back. Like when's the last movie he was in? The last major movie he was in was The Good Shepherd, which. That's why I remember. <laughs> That's why I remember being his last movie. But, uh, and, and I remember him barely being in it. I remember that movie being boring as sin. But I, all I remember was like, "Holy shit, Joe Pesci's back!" Um, and it was a Robert De Niro directed movie. So of course he did. Is that you know De Niro's his best buddy? He's one of his best buddies, and he, god damn man. Uh, he is great. Like, he is this really likable mob boss. I forget what, what's the guy's name. It was in real life. Um, who, he's really charming and funny, like, and likable, like, because he's Joe Pesci. But also, he's intimidating as shit because he's Joe Pesci. He's a guy who you can easily, like, just like Joe Pesci, you don't want to fuck with and don't want to go on his bad side because he will fuck you up or he will send somebody to fuck you up. Um, I love Joe. Yeah, like, Joe Pesci is amazing. Like, I, it's like, I wish he didn't retire. Like, he just decided to retire randomly at, after the 90s and uh, called it quits and, you know, he disappeared off the face of the earth and now he's back doing this. Like I said, a lot of people say he should get an Oscar. <coughs> um, but, yeah, uh, I, I, like I said, I, I want to kind of go with Pacino a little bit more than uh, Pesci. And I'm, like, before I saw this movie, I almost said Brad Pitt and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood should have got that, should get that uh, Best Supporting Actor. And, uh, but I'm kind of now leaning towards Pacino more than I am. Uh, Brad Pitt, but, um, uh, fuck, uh, I think, I, 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 one of the things I also love about this movie is that it is kind of funny, it is a funny movie, uh, in a movie that has some really fucking dramatic and really intense scenes in it, there are really, some really intense scenes in this movie, but, um, this movie also can be really goddamn funny. They're, one of my favorite lines of this whole movie is there's this part where Pacino and De Niro are talking about... Uh, oh, no, yeah, it's Pacino and De Niro. Uh, De Niro's telling him that Tony is not happy with him. And D D Pacino's like, Tony who? He's like, Tony. It's like, Tony who? It's like, you know, Tony. He's like... It's like... It's like every... There's a million Italians named Tony. Like... You gotta be more specific. Like he's like, what is everybody's obsession? Italian's obsessions with Damon her son's Tony. That's a funny line. I was like, that was a legit funny line. I laughed at that. That's 
I hate to say that, but it's actually true. I have a grandpa who named us, had a son, and named him Tony. So there you go. Um, my grandpa's Italian. My grandpa actually sit, shares the same birthday, exact same day. He was born the exact same day and year as Al Pacino. So he's always, it's actually true. That's all I found that fucking funny. But, um,. Yeah, uh, fuck, man, he's hot. Uh, I, like I said, there's a lot of funny moments in this movie to kind of break away from the, the break a little bit of the tension a little bit, especially like towards the when you know where we get to get into the part of what happens to Jimmy Hoffa. Um, there's a whole like long car ride. It's really intense and really. Ooh, like, like, like you're just sitting there, like on the edge of your seat because you know what's about to happen, and but then it's also cut, it, it, like as they're doing this car ride, really intense car ride. It's interlaced with like a dialogue about them talking about fish and different kinds of fish and what you should do with fish when you get them and stuff like that. It's fucking hilarious. I was like, it's great. I, was, I love this movie. Try to break the tension a little bit. I also love the fact there's this whole running. I don't even think it's supposed to be a gag, but it's kind of funny at the same time. Um, where they keep introducing like all these side characters that are like really minor characters throughout the story. And they'll like put a title card under the picture of this person, and he'll say they were shot to death in 1980 or blown up in 1980 or something like that. And it's like a recurring gag that keeps happening throughout the whole movie. And I like couldn't stop laughing because it happens throughout majority of the fucking thing. Um, there's never a point in this movie where I was bored. It is a three and a half hour movie, but it's an epic. It's an epic. Like, I give Scorsese credit. He went all out for this, man. He went balls out. Like, he didn't just, like, cut it down to, like, an hour and a half or something like that. He stuck with his gun. He, he, he's a guy who has enough respect that he can, what he wants, studios will give him. Uh, you know, he's well respected at this point. He knows how to keep a movie like this long of a movie uh, keep it interesting and not be bored. I like I said, I'll never say that Scorsese's every movie he's done is perfect. But like he for the most part he has you know a pretty goddamn great track record. Um three and a half yeah, it is a free I was never bored one bit like while watching this movie. I was just I could, I had to, why it took me this long? It took me three days to watch it. Somebody asked me, how long is it going to take you to watch it? It took me three days to watch it. And I, why it took me that long? I, I could have maybe watched it all in one day if I really wanted to. But I had family over. I had family here. I was sick. I had to work. There was times where I just had to go to work or I had to go to bed. I had no choice. If I, I, if I wanted to get some decent sleep, you know. I had to turn the movie off, uh, you know, yeah, so I mean, it was like, watch this movie or get no sleep. It's, it's not an easy, it's a pretty easy choice. Um, also, I guess one thing I should talk about with talk about this movie, and it's, it's a thing that's been talked about a lot, this uh, film, uh, the aging effects. Um, I didn't, like, I didn't really notice it that much. I uh, like I was there's sometimes where I was trying to like see if I noticed any like <sighs> like iffiness about it but I really didn't uh there may be a couple here and there like when Pacino's first introduced I was like eh, it looks a little weird it does look I thought it looked a little weird here and there but it wasn't that bad uh like you know and also, at the same time, this is Martin Scorsese we're talking about. This is a guy who's not going to half-ass anything. And he's never half-assed anything in his life. So I highly doubt if he, he's going to ever half-ass this uh, this CGI effect. He's not just going to like do what they did with cats and just try to finish it in like, a couple hours before the movie premieres. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. He, he didn't... He, I, I highly doubt, like I said, Scorsese doesn't fucking, you know, half-ass anything, so, yeah. God damn, this is a great movie. 
I now the tough part for me is I for a long time up until this point was pretty sure what I thought my number one film of the year was favorite film of the year was until I saw this movie and now I'm kind of going back and forth about the movie I, I'm not going to say what it was but uh, that movie or this movie which one is better and I'm like god damn man they're both fucking like two of the best I'm like can I do a tie I don't know I don't want to that's that's a cop out. I feel like that's a cop out. So I might, I don't think I'm gonna do that. So, but fuck, man. And like I said, I haven't seen anything. There's still other movies I still gotta see, like Uncut Gems, 1917, and stuff. But I have a feeling I've seen the best, the best. But I'm gonna still not do my best of yet until I see all those yet. But yeah, go watch The Irishman. I don't think I to tell you, I don't think uh, I have to tell you anything that no critic has already said already about this fucking movie. God damn, man. Like, this is better than half the shit out on cinema. <laughs> this is probably, actually, this is better than anything out, that's out in cinema right now. You can watch on fucking Netflix. If you, it's better than sit, watching this movie for three and a half hours better than sitting for, I don't know, fuck, any the recent Star Wars movie, any fucking thing. I'm trying to think like, nah, man, there's nothing really out right now that really even comes close to this. Uh, fuck. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's as far as the Irishman goes. Fucking go see it, watch it if you haven't seen it already. I know a lot of people already have. I know some people started watch saw it when it or started watching it when it premiered and then didn't finish watching it, which. Okay, if you're one of those people, go finish watching this movie for love of fucking God. PSA to everybody. Um, but yeah, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, like I said, I got still do reviews for Uncut Gems and The Grudge. I will try to get a review for Marriage Story sometime in the few next coming weeks. And also, I want to try to get Judy. Uh, I know Judy just came out on Breadbox. I want to try to review that. It didn't come to my theater. I don't know why. Don't ask me. Uh, I know stuff like Peter Butter Falcon and what was the other one? I mean, some stuff like that came out on Redbox. I don't know if I'll have time to get into that. Uh, but yeah, until then, I'll talk to you guys later.